I wouldn't be able to do any of the work I've done up here without these machines. All right, now, I wouldn't be showing you everything if I didn't talk about these machines because I wouldn't be able to do any of the work I've done up here without these machines. And it took me a little while to figure that out. So when I, when I first got the property, I did get this skid steer right away. This is a Kubota SSV65. And we, I, I bought that in the, the next month that we took on the property because I knew I was going to need it to get through the winter so that I could get access up here because we were going to be commuting back and forth. This was critical. It was also critical in the first leg of construction because we used it to unload delivery trucks, move material around with the forks. It was absolutely critical. Um, it was critical for a lot of the earthworks. When, I first, when we first started and we broke ground and it would be April of 2021, um, we, I was renting a mini excavator and at that time it worked out okay because I wasn't I did I only needed it to break ground on some initial things to make some road improvements uh, to cut some drainage off the roads and to do some initial terracing but I'm glad that I bought this so it's a Kubota KX040-4 and I love this machine it's incredibly versatile it has a six-way articulating dozer blade which is really really handy when it comes to terracing ground and shaping ground i use these machines almost every day right now things are slowing down i'm not the skid steer gets absolutely used every day when i first started and i was talking about this in the early vlogs is i wa i wanted to get a tractor that had a backhoe attachment on it and it was actually one of the members in from the field that it came up in a Q&A where they, they suggested that uh, I should use, I should have both machines. And at first I was like, whoa, I don't know about that. You know, that's a lot of extra money. And it is, there's no question about it. These machines are expensive, but I'm really glad that I did two machines and not one because a backhoe just can't do the same maneuvers that, a, that an excavator can like this. And so this these two machines have been absolutely critical. We would not be able to be doing what we're doing up here if it weren't for these machines. So I've become quite a good operator on these things. I have hundreds of hours in on them now. And uh, on the mini excavator, I have uh, three attachments. I have a cleanup bucket and a digging bucket, which all, mini, all excavators come with. But I've also purchased a brush rake so that I can pull out stumps. I can grab brush from when we're logging and you know clearing out brush and stuff like that. It's been really handy. And um, yeah, this machine gets used a lot. Another way we've used this machine actually has been to hang things. So we've moved, um, when, when we installed that deck in the greenhouse, we used the mini excavator with slings to lift it up and get it into place. So it's, it's been really, really handy that way, uh, not just from moving earth. And the skid steer, I've got a lot of different attachments for the skid steer. Of course, the bucket's what get used the most, but uh, for snow removal, I have a articulating blade, which is what I use probably 95% of the time when it comes to snow removal. I'll also use the bucket to move piles and things like that, but I also have a snow blower for it, which I don't use very often, but when you need it, it is absolutely critical. The big challenge I have up here with snow is we have a fairly confined space because we're very heavily treed here. And so a lot of the roads, blowing snow is way easier than, than just pushing it, especially it gets to a point in the winter where you're, you lose so much real estate, you have a basically a tunnel on your driveway. And so the snowblower is great to come in there and just drive along that last foot on the side of a road and just blow everything over and down to the low side. So it's been really, really crucial. So I've got, um, I have a rock bucket for this as well, which has been very helpful, especially when it comes to the whole screening soil process. And I also have a grappler bucket for this, which I actually, I thought I would use more than I do and I don't really need it as much. I'll probably sell it. Okay, there's one more machine I wanna show you guys before we wrap this video up. All right, well, if you're familiar with my videos, you probably know what this machine is. This is a BCS walk behind tractor. I've had this particular model for four or five years. And back in the farming days, 
the implement I used the most was a rototiller with a precision depth roller attached. That's how we did all the bed prep on the farm. But the attachment I use the most now on the homestead is this brush mower. And this, this tool has got a lot of work because when we built the fence on the property, we had to clear everything. We either had to cut trees down with chainsaws and just clear material out of the way by hand, but we used the brush mower to just mow everything else in between. And I'm actually about to start using this big time because what I'm gonna be doing before the winter is going and mowing down all the shoulders of my driveway so that I have more room for snow. I didn't do that last year and I really regretted it because as the snow falls, it just areas that are brushy just get lost. They look like piles of snow. So I'm gonna be mowing all of these down. And on the homestead here, this tool has been absolutely critical. And it's pretty much the tool I use the most. In the winter time, I do put the snow blower on this and it's really handy because we get so much snow up here that I have a lot of little paths to manage. And I can do a lot of those by hand, but sometimes we get so much snow at once that just to fire this thing up and use the snow blower makes life so much easier. So that is the last piece of equipment that uh, is really critical on the homestead here. All right, folks, so that's a wrap. That's the whole homestead. You know, if you wanna know any of the micro details of any of the things that you saw in this review, all the vlogs, up at from the field so i've been vlogging almost daily for the last two years all that is up at from the field tv and um, a lot has changed here over the last two years a lot more is going to change next season i'll be vlogging all of that there as well so if you guys like this video if you found it helpful smash the like button subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and head over to from the field tv and sign up for seven days for free if you're not already a member and just check out the massive amount of content that we have up here. There's a lot more videos up there than just me posting. We have other content creators and many or a couple years of me touring around North America showing you great homesteads, farms, and regenerative agriculture. All right, folks, we'll see you in the next one.